All right, guys, today I thought I would talk about Bark River knives, some of the classics, and whether they are worth it or not to buy. Now, the primary reason I wanted to do a video like this is because I'm actually seeing quite a few Barkies out there, and it seems like Bark River knives as a whole is starting to gain a lot more popularity and traction. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe they've always been super popular and I've just missed it, but today I thought I would talk about some of the Bark Rivers that I own, and seeing as I've owned Bark River knives, different ones, throughout the years uh, for close to 10 years I think it's about nine years now that I've had at least one Bark River in my collection uh, and different ones even made uh, by Bark River for other brands such as like ambush knives and I've seen a lot of their work used a lot of their work and wanted to talk about some of the pros the cons of the company and the knives that they make whether it's through a subsidiary brand or through the brand themselves all right, so without any further ado, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, check out the Instagram. All the support is uh, very appreciated. Okay, so like I said, I've owned many of their knives from things like Ambush to Bark Rivers proper, and I have three Bark Rivers here uh, that I have in my collection currently, and I thought I would talk about some of the biggest pros and cons. So starting off with the biggest pros of these blades. So the first one for me, and I'm not exactly sure how they do it, but just about every Bark River knife, even if it's made by uh, or under a different brand name is extremely comfortable. The way that Bark River forms their ergonomics, once again, I'm not entirely sure how they do it and nail it every time, but I have yet to really come across a Bark River blade that is uncomfortable. They are super comfy and from a wide plethora of different kind of walks of life, so to speak, like the Bravo is more of a tactical military blade. The Bushcrafter, for instance, is definitely far from that. It's designed to be more of a woods blade, more of a bushcrafting kind of uh, tool, as you will, or knife, and honestly is one of my go-tos and has been for many years. And even as a kind of intermediary, like the Aurora, which I think is kind of a blend of tactical and wilderness uh, this blade isn't you know quite the bravo one level of intensity as far as tactical goes but the styling and the ergonomics are reasonably similar so overall the biggest pro i have to say about any of their blades is that they are very comfortable to handle and hold and basically have no hot basically have no hot spots so aside from that, I think the other big pro to Bark River Knives is the level of versatility and options that they have within their blades. Of course, they offer so many different designs. It's impossible to have them all, but they offer many different traditional styled blades like original styled or kind of vintage styled buoy knives to more of their own patterns and their own designs for bushcrafting, tactical use, combat. They offer machetes, hatchets, basically everything under the sun Bark River is either making or has made in the past. So they offer a number of different designs. And the cool thing about Bark River is especially with their classic staples, things like the Bushcrafter, things like the Bravo, things like the Aurora, they offer them in a wide variety of different handle options and it's blade steels which is probably a little bit more important in my book uh, things such as cpm 3v unfortunately these two are both in a2 but they do offer things like crew wear um, s45 and s35 vn and a wide variety of different steels so if you're looking for something that's a little bit more mission specific or if you're after a particular type of steel for a particular reason like i really like the cpm 3v in my bushcrafter because it is a very strong very uh, overall very tough steel that can take a beating and i really like that ability or that toughness out of my edges in bushcrafting because as you guys probably know i'm not very nice to my bushcrafting knives at times they have to do whatever task i call upon them to do so <clears throat> Having specific steels like CPM 3V or even S35 or S45 VN or Crew Wear or Magna Cut is very nice and in some ways very important. 
So those are some of the biggest pros I have to say to Bark River. Like I said, the designs are great, especially their classics such as the Bushcrafter and the Bravo are very well known. And the Bravo practically put this company on the radar for many people, especially many people in the tactical market. This kind of solidified Bark River's name and their popularity. So let's talk about some of the downsides of this company. Now, I will say, I. So I will say one thing that I am pretty impressed about with the company is Mike Stewart as the uh, owner, CEO, whatever you'd like to call him, is a very active person, especially on their Facebook group. If you have issues with the knives, you can basically just contact him and he will take care of you. They do have a really solid warranty as well. Um, they do back their knives 100%. They Firmly, I've never met a owner that so heavily and firmly believed in the quality and the production of their knives. And he really knows everything that goes into any one of his designs. And there's usually a handful of people, it's a small operation that goes into making these knives. So a very dedicated team and they really do stand behind their products. If you do break one or if you do damage one in any way, even if you damage things like the sheaths, they'll get you taken care of with new sheaths and replacement equipment all the time. So they are a really astounding they're a really astounding company for that reason. Now, some of the downsides to the company. The biggest one for me is that while I do love their options, they are a small batch type of maker and they make their knives in runs. So say you like the Bark River Knives Bravo 1 and you want it in a particular steel and maybe a particular handle option, the chances are very high that say you want an LMAX with a type of like red micarta. Chances are very high that that exists, but because they only do them in batches and in runs, you may be waiting a very long time to get the particular knife that you want. So so in the end, you might end up going with CPM Crewwear or CPM 3V, which are all fantastic options. All of those steels are great. Even A2 is not bad at all, um, but you may not get what you exactly want because it may not be either available at the time or available for some time. So that's probably one of the big disadvantages to that kind of customizability. In addition to that too, I feel like the customizability goes overboard a little bit and you end up having so many options that are kind of unnecessary. Once again, for a tactical knife you know they have beautiful beautiful things like zebra wood handles but you probably do not want to take a you know a2 or even a cpm 3v with zebra wood handles out into the field and beat on it because that wood can break can crack can shatter and i have seen some barkies that have broken handles because of a missed strike from a baton and once again the owner does take care of and backs their knives for the lifetime of the blade so they will get you taken care of, but the fact of the matter is these are kind of more leaning towards art pieces and less functional pieces of tool that are designed to be used hard. So do bear that in mind as well. Next to that too, I will say there is a bit of a BRK tax, if you will. Uh, these knives do not come cheap. Bark River Knives knows who they are and they take a great pride in knowing who they are. So all of these knives that you see here are right around $260 MSRP and they are not cheap at all. I think I paid around 200 for this one. Luckily, this one I got from a viewer and a subscriber, so I got it for a bit cheaper than 200, but uh, this one I paid around, I think, 264. So these knives are all quite expensive, and uh, I'm definitely glad that I've gotten deals on the ones I have, but Bark River does not sell their knives for cheap at all. And of course, these are all reasonably what I would consider bland knives, which does not mean that they do not perform well, but you know, all of these knives use canvas micarta. They aren't really special with like mosaic pins and everything. If you want a mosaic pinned, crazy steel, crazy handled uh, Bark River, you could be talking upwards of $350 for that knife so you know it would be essentially the same exact design same bravo one as this but you know have say like crew wear and mosaic pins with a you know um with the zebra wood handle and those types of options would definitely increase the price heavily so 
there is that to keep in mind. The prices are never cheap and they only get more expensive the more uh, tricked out or wild you want it. Overall though, I will say this as well, there is some notion out there that the newer bark rivers are lacking in quality i will say i'm not sure how valid that is most of my bark rivers are older or older designs so from what i've seen everything seems to be up to par and i haven't had any real personal issues of course the a2 tool steels do need to be uh, understood that they are more brittle a2 tool steel as a whole is a more brittle steel so things like this aurora i could easily snap the tip off of this if i drove it into a piece of wood and cranked on it because this is a convex grind with a very unsupported tip that is very central to the handle design so it would be very easy to snap the tip off and then say that these knives are poor quality i don't think they are poor quality though um, you just have to respect the steel of course if you had an aurora and cpm 3v the performance would be different and you probably wouldn't be able to snap the tip as easily so as far as quality goes i've never found it in a BRK that has been poorly made uh, or did not perform up to its, you know, up to a reasonable expectation. As far as it goes though, um, I still like Bark Rivers. I still add Bark Rivers occasionally. For me personally, the reason why I don't have more of them is simply for the fact that I find them to be a little bit expensive and uh, a lot of the Bark River designs, while good, are not necessarily my cup of tea. I think of Bark River knives a lot as a tops knives, but kind of high-end versions. So tops will make a lot of wild designs, and you know they use differentially heat-treated 1095, and that's basically it. And they will usually, you know, use some kind of truck bed liner coating. Whereas uh, Bark River knives will make actually some of even the very same designs that Topps makes, but they will make them out of, you know, CPM 3V, LMAX, uh, A2. They'll make them out of, you know, a little bit higher quality materials, usually using, you know, micartas or some type of uh, rare or expensive wood. And they will, um, you know, go for a bit more uh, money so you know they make a lot of designs and a lot of those designs similar to tops just aren't necessarily and a lot of those designs similar to tops aren't just necessarily my cup of tea so that's why i don't have more bark river knives uh you know they do make solid knives and if they make a knife that interests you or a design that you want to use certainly i would recommend going ahead with it because barkies are not going to disappoint you and i will say any Despite any design, they will likely have an insanely comfortable handle and be very comfortable to use. Um, I will say too though, that Bark River does make a solid knife and my go-to bushcrafting blade and wilderness blade as a whole still is the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, the original in CPM 3V. This is a blade that once again, I've had for about 10 years and at the time it was made using cpm 3v it was basically the only knife of its class doing what it was doing and just now like 10 years later many more bushcrafting knives or many more knives in and knife companies are kind of making knives that are on par with the bushcrafters so the bushcrafter had it right many moons ago and is still one of my heavily recommended go-to's for bushcrafting and overall uh, wilderness living anyways guys that is bark river knives in a nutshell hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out